Pilots! Drain Man here, and today I've got a very special video. In today's video, we are checking out the all new Sector 5 V3 FPV HD frame by HGLRC. This is sick because there was a V1, there was a V2, and now there's a V3. So that means that this frame has been redefined by all of your suggestions that you've given back to HGLRC and they have dropped this hotness. Now they have hooked me up with all the components we need to build this mofo, but we're going to check it out before we get into that and let's see how did they really do. Let's go. Alright pilots, I am truly excited to introduce this frame to be one of the only channels, if not the first channel, <laughs> to bring you this very hot frame. The Sector V2 was absolutely phenomenal, I loved it, but there was a few things that they could have changed, and guess what? they did. So now the V3 is here and although it is an HD frame, which means if you're not flying DJI, what does that mean? Does that mean you can't fly this frame? No. No, it doesn't mean that. You can fly this frame if you want to. So without any more messing around, let's crack this baby open. Oh, I don't even need a blade. Look at that. All right, so let's see what is inside of the box. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> Looks like we've got all the 3D printed parts that we need. That is awesome. Don't you hate when you get a frame and you open it up and there's like the body and the arms and the screws and you're like, where's the rest of the accessories? So then you're digging around your pile and you're robbing stuff off of other drones that are up on the drone wall, just chilling there, doing their thing. And here you are picking parts out of them to build a frame because the manufacturer don't give you everything that you need. I hate that. All right, here we go. So yes, they did give me this sweet shirt and I do like it. I, 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 I don't know how I feel about the collar. I don't know if that's really my style. So let's open this up. Let's see what everything that it comes with because it looks like it actually comes with a lot. Normally you don't have to do a components check on a frame, but with this one, it looks like you do. Okay, so this is gonna be the assembly portion of the frame. That's beautiful, good to have. You've got your bottom plate, top plate, camera plates, mounting plate, and Maybe like an arm plate? Look at that. HGLRC <laughs> sector. Now, I am happy to tell you that these arms are five millimeter arms, so they're nice and strong. They're not gonna break every time you crash. Uh, and then let's crack this bag open and see what's in here. All right, so we've got a sweet little sticker pack. Okay, quality check sticker. You've got yourself a uh, battery, anti-slip battery pad. Oh, it's got texture. Oh, can you see that? Oh, I like it. Okay, that's much better than those uh, regular ones. It's still not UmaGrip, but if you like UmaGrip, go get UmaGrip. So now we've got one, two, three, four different battery straps. Doom! I don't know if all the frames come with that. I mean, they must, right? Wow, four battery straps. You can't beat that. And then we've got ourselves some Forever Tube with end caps that are red, which looks cool. I like the red caps rather than the black caps, so that's really nice. We're gonna set that aside. So we've got all of our screws, holy schmoly. And then we've got grommets, we've got spacers, we've got nylon lock nuts, uh, two millimeter nylon lock nuts. You've got little screws, big screws, long screws, adapting screws, gold screws, uh, different size standoffs. Oof, this looks like this is going to be uh, quite the build here. And then look at that. You've got three color TPU printed mounts. And we're talking about, oh, we're talking about the skids. You got your DJI mounting antenna solution. You've got other stuff. If you wanted to mount like SMA, you've got that. You've got this, depending on what type of GoPro you're running, you will have different mounts to uh, accommodate you. You've even got a guard to protect the front of your GoPro upon impact. So that's really, really nice. 
You've got some other mounting hardware. Man, they have really hooked it up. Here is the side pieces. These are my absolute favorite. I'm not really sure of the actual name of them, but it's basically like a cradle of some sort. So you put your DJI air unit in there, you mount this, and your air unit is now cradled nice and snug inside your frame. So when you're flying and crashing and banging and jumping, you're not losing your air unit or banging it all around, messing it all up. So that's really nice. You've got a front bumper here, or possibly it's a rear bumper. I'm not sure, but it's there. You've got some plates here that are clearly for the mounting of your camera. Last but not least, this is a very important component because if you are going to run GPS, which they did send me a GPS too, I am super grateful for that. Any of my pilots that like GPS, you will like this build because it comes with a TPU printed GPS holder, which actually holds the uh, GPS up on the back, out of the way, right there where it'll get plenty of satellites. So that way when you arm, you can quickly get your satellites and quickly get off the ground. So jumping away from the frame for a moment because this is their frame. They've designed it to work around their components, which I mean is only right, right? It's not just a frame company. HGLRC makes everything, everything from GPSs and flight controllers and ESCs and, and motors. I mean, they have it all. So if you planned on building an entire HDLRC drone, these components just work with it seamlessly. But we are going to assemble this frame and we're going to get into that here in a second. But before we do that, I want to talk about something with this flight controller real quick. This is the HGLRC Zeus F722. And I have this flight controller right here in several of those drones. And I absolutely love it. I just love F7s. I'm into the faster, stronger CPUs. I love what they have to offer. So now with this F7 Zeus HGLRC flight controller, and I'm going to show it to you here in a second. We're going to, you know what? I'll show it to you now. Look at this. Mm. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at that thing. Oh my goodness. All right, hold on. We're going to crack this open. Wow. Let me zoom in for you. Look at that. That is a beautiful flight controller. Look at that. Look at all the pads you've got. Look at all the plugs you've got. Look, you've got OSD, you've got a Type-C brass connector. It is a gold-plated connector. You've got pads out the yin-yang. You've got buttons here. I mean, this thing has everything, including LED indicators to know what's going on or if you needed to do a little bit of uh, debugging. This flight controller is sweet. Here is the catch about this flight controller, and this is why I'm bringing it up. Although it's going to be a part of our build, which is going to be in a different video, I still still want to mention that they are cutting the price on this flight controller. This guy right here, I, it's going to be cut in nearly half. So it is going to be the strongest, fastest flight controller on the market for the same price as an F4 flight controller. If that's not a win, I, I don't know what is. I really don't. So real quick, before we assemble the frame, I want to check out this HGLRC LED board W554B. Uh, I'm not sure why they named it that. I think it's just a board that you place in your stack and you get yourself some LEDs. But before we dive into building this frame, I just want to check this out real quick. Let's see what's inside of here. Oh, this is not a board at all. Oh, it's practically race wire. How cool is that? And look at, oh my God, tell me they did not. They, <laughs> they did, look at this. So all you've got to do is plug this in right here and then you plug this in right here. This is wicked. And then you can mount these wherever you want. You heat shrink them to keep them safe. If you rip off a connector, you've got the solder plugs in the back. You can program these. These are fully programmable LEDs. If you guys want to know how to use these, let me know. I'll make a video. These are so awesome. They take a boring quad and they make them very, very bright and exciting and fun to watch. You can do different colors in the front, different colors in the back. You can set them to go off your battery. They'll be green when your battery's full yellow when your battery's starting to die and red when you need to bring that in. I mean, these things are awesome. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to assemble this frame real quick. I'm going to meet you guys back here and we'll talk about it some and welcome back pilots. Now I didn't mount the GoPro mount all the way. Now me, I fly with a GoPro all the time. I use the Hero 8 when I'm flying and I didn't connect it all the way because I thought it was worth showing you guys. Look how this goes together. All right, now look at this. If I pull it out all the way because I didn't screw it in. So if I pull it out all the way, 
you can see this big like T-hole. Now, if you weren't gonna rock one, that's okay. You don't have to worry about it. Just leave it open. You'll get yourself some extra airflow. But if you are going to rock a GoPro, you can use this for your hero and check this out. There is holes going all the way down. You've got, you know, 50, 45, 30, 35, 20, 25, whatever they are, you've got them all. And that is so awesome. So what you do is this is actually shaped like a T and watch this. It just pops right in. Look at that. And what you do is you mount yourself this little harness right here on the front with your same two bolts that you would put in. Even if you weren't using it, you'd lock those two down nice and tight on this little guy. And then you stick your little T in. And I, I just, I absolutely love it. I think that is genius. You can literally adjust the degree in which it sits at. So this would be locked and fixed. This would not move. And you could just tilt this up in whatever degree you like to fly. So, and you would want to match that to your FPV camera, which also has a ratio to set right here. I'm not sure if you can see it. There's a couple holes here, just like every frame has, where you can set your FPV camera to 25, 30, 35, whatever. And then what you would do is you would match it with this. So if you're rocking 25, you would stay up nice and high like that. But if you were going to race around and, and really fly fast, you would do it like this. And I absolutely love that. I thought it was so cool when I was putting it together that I said, you know what? I'm not going to bolt this on yet. I want them to see how it goes together. And look at that. That is just too cool. Now, let's say that you are not flying a hero because this is definitely for a hero what if you're rocking a session what if you have an osmo or uh, all these other cams uh what if you've got that well you can't stick that in here right no you can't well guess what that's why they made this guy here this one actually drops in the exact same way check it out so what you'll do is you'll lock your front together on your harness just like so and then the back drops in just like the other one right in with the t effect and there you go you can give yourself all the angle in the world or you can pop this up and give yourself less angle Oh, I went too far and give yourself less angle. So that's really, really cool. Watch. So there's like 25, whatever. And boom, now you're at like 50 and it comes with your frame. To me, that's a winner. We should not be receiving these frames with absolutely no accessories where we can't freaking assemble them and you can't figure it out. So down on the bottom, you've got these super beefy skid type deals and they also act as bumpers. So if you're going to go ahead and take a hard crash, you've got some protection. Look at this. All right, so now you're protecting your motor, you're protecting your arms, you are protecting your investment. I like it. Now, check this out. Right here, you actually get two of them, so I don't know why you would need two, but hey, they decided to print you two. Maybe you wanted to run a second one just for looks. You can if you want to, but right here, you've got a spot where you can have your uh, XT60 lead run up through there, and then it'll keep it from getting tangled up in your props. A little bit of nice cable management there. Everybody likes cable management, at least I do. I don't like wires running all over the place and for this you know you're gonna go ahead and probably strap that in with your battery anyway so what that'll do is that'll help you keep it up and out of your way and it's just nice when you build it to have somewhere to put it there is also a little slot underneath in here you really can't see it but it's a nice little tuck away and it's the perfect spot to put your capacitor you can put your capacitor under there you can run your wires up and around and then you can make your connections and it's out of the way now you've got 20 by 20 and you've got 30 by 30 mounting solutions so that's really awesome Awesome. You've got your cradle like we talked about for the DJI air unit. Now keep in mind, you'll notice here I've got some extra standoffs and these are all actually different sizes and that's because things like this or things like this SMA antenna holder, they will actually have a space where they sit above the standoff. So you're going to need lower standoffs and they've actually provided that. You don't have to pay extra for it. You don't have to hunt it down. You don't have to measure. You just use the shorter ones if you're going to use something like this or if you want to use the power supply cable holder dealio, that's all you got to do is put on the lower standoff. Now there's many of other options here. So other than that, you've also got yourself in the back. I went ahead and installed it, but during our build video, when we go to build this, you'll see that I'll pull it off because I don't use it. I use DJI. I use it for my receiver and I use it for my video. But 
right in here you can put your antennas and all that fits super nice so you can slide them up in here they're protected they're out of the way they're not in the props i mean it's just it's just nice man it's like all already figured out for me all i got to do is put it together and enjoy it now you also have the cradle in the back nice and low if you were going to run crossfire so you can put your little t right here now also you're noticing this right here and you're going drain man what's that big old ugly thing right there well i'm going to tell you what that is that is for your GPS. So if you're not going to run GPS, don't worry about it. Don't install it. But if you are going to run GPS, this right here is just absolutely amazing. It allows you to slide it in. Your wires go right through this little pocket right here. And then you're able to solder it up to your flight controller. And you've got your GPS in a safe place. You've got it in a place that it's going to receive great satellite signal. And that right there is a win for me. Next up, we have our DJI antenna mounts. For me, this is the one that I will most likely use. It's where you just slide them both in and you've got the MMCX 90s that attach right to the air unit that's sitting right here inside of the cradle. Uh, if you did want to go with a regular VTX, you've got two extra spots back here. Some VTX is like the rush tank. They actually have a mounting option and they've given you that right here. Boom, 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 boom. Go ahead and put yourself some screws and you can mount it. Now, what if I don't have screws? Well, guess what? They supplied you with all the screws you're gonna need. You've got all the screws you need to make that happen. You don't have to pull from other quads. You can actually get this drone built and done, built by what's coming inside of it. Now, up here in the front, we got ourselves our bumper, which to me, I don't know how often we actually use that. Maybe if you come in for a landing and you're landing kind of rough, it might save the day. But more or less for me, it's, it's, it's basically just looks. It makes it look nicer. Now we're going to move on to the very last TPU printed part outside of the DJI camera little ring, which is always awesome. I've never tried one. I'm going to try it now because they hooked me up with one. And then you've got your GoPro protector like we talked about. But if you're mounting the DJI camera, you are not going to need this. Just take this and throw it away. But if you're mounting a different camera and it is a 19 by 19 mounting, you are going to need this. And that's pretty awesome because these other guys aren't giving you this stuff. So I am happy about it. Take your razor blade. You're going to cut it right here. And then you are going to cut it right here and then you are going to take the two pieces you're going to wedge them in because they're going to fit perfectly because it was designed for it and after you get them in then you are done and you are able to hold smaller cameras the very last thing that i want to do is i'm going to do it here with you guys is the battery anti-slip pad and it's that simple you just punch out all the stuff you rip off the uh, protective film which is what keeps your sticky from getting all dirty before you actually receive it and get to stick it. So I'm gonna pull that last piece off. And then it's as simple as lining it up over the holes and plopping it down. There you go. So now when you put your battery on top, it'll stay nice and strong. And what I like about this, and not to get into a battery pad like it's important or anything, but it actually has texture to it. So I feel like the battery ain't gonna slip on this. Not that it does slip on the other ones, but normally I find myself throwing away what comes with the frame and I'm rocking the Uma Grip or the Uma Grip Lite because that stuff is super, super sticky. But I personally feel that with this rugged texture, I don't need to do that. I can save my money. All right, pilots, this frame is $55. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know what you think. Do you think this frame is worth $55? Is it worth less? Is it worth more? Tell me what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're looking forward to the build video, and I will see you on the next one. Oh.